Hello, good Monday morning. Uh, welcome to uh, day 21 of Advent of Code. Uh, we're in the last week, the final five days. Uh, can't believe uh, uh, we've gotten so far. I definitely wouldn't have expected it myself. Um, before we go on with day 21, I'm going to do a quick recap of the weekend. Days 19 and 20. And uh, then uh, we'll go on with uh, today's puzzle. Uh, and before I do a recap of that, I also just want to go over day 18 really quick because uh, we left off last time, uh, uh, we solved the first part in the stream and the second part as well and uh, I solved, well the second part we always almost got to the, uh, to the answer, I uh, had to cut off the stream at 3 hours uh, but then just 10 minutes later I solved it. I found the uh, the last bug that was uh, in our way, uh, standing in our way before we got the answer. And the solution hasn't changed much. Uh, the bug was that when we were evaluating expressions, um, you would end up with uh, digits that were surrounded by single parentheses. And um, so, for example, it looked like uh, something like this. It would be 18 plus uh, 19 times two, let's say something like this. And the, um, the bug was that because of these parentheses, it would not do the um, precedence correctly. So in our puzzle, uh, plus uh, had a higher precedence than, than, multipl uh, than multiplication. So uh, addition had to happen before. And because of these parentheses, our bug uh, didn't see this as a, as something that had to be evaluated first and did this first instead so the i solved that by uh just adding a single line here uh, in this recursive function at the top uh clean expression uh and is we uh, basically replace we find uh, single digits inside parentheses we uh, remove the parentheses and then uh, that's our clean expression that we work with so that was the uh, day 18 um and uh, yeah, let's go on with uh, short recaps of day 19 and 20. So day 19 was about a uh, monster messages. As you could see in a map, a monster appeared here. That's really cool. Uh, and it had to do with this, um, uh, with day 19's puzzle. And day 19 was, um, um, you got an input, which was a rule of messages and also uh, followed by uh, a list of messages and you had to determine which ones uh, were valid and which were not and the rules were specified as follows uh, for um, they were starting with the rule id and followed by the rule spec and in this case for example rule four um, it needs to match an a rule five needs to match a b and other rules could could uh, contain nested loose, uh, rules inside himself. So rule three would match four and five followed by each other or five followed by four and so on. Uh, and obviously our input was much uh, much larger than that. Here was an example input that I had to work with. And you had to, the answer for the first part uh, was um, how many messages completely match rule number zero. And rule number zero was the last one in the chain of all these rules. So what I decided my approach was that um, I know that our rule set is gonna have at least, well our rule set is gonna start somewhere with uh, something that we can work with. So like with a, there's gonna be a rule that doesn't have any nested rules, which is gonna be the top rule. In this case rule number one and, and 14 had uh, something that we can work with. Uh, and uh, what I did is I evaluated all the other rules uh, step by step. So, for example, rule number one can be evaluated to A and rule number 14 evaluated to B. And then I would go through the uh, array of rules and I would find, I would replace all the ones with, uh, with A and all the 14s with B. Uh, so that, and I would iterate over the array of rules until all rules have been evaluated. So as soon as I found uh something that I, a rule that i can replace it with i would replace it with and then i would evaluate after several iterations i would find out uh i can show you 
so here's day 19 um, I solved them in I added them to into rules let me add a debug point here and I can show you what uh, the uh, final thing looked like as you can see here um, the, the our, my input was significantly bigger but in this case you can see what I saw just here here so we had a uh, rule number 123 was B so I kind of like the evaluation started from there and eventually I ended up with rules that were um, yeah rule number zero was the largest one it's just a bunch of A's and B's or A's and B's and, and so on so in code this looks like uh, basically like this I first had an input I parsed it we have the rules here I parsed the rules as well into a an array and I split the, the rule ID and with the rule spec and inside the evaluate rules a function that I uh, use in part one and two as well I ha uh, have a loop that goes on until there's no more rules to evaluate and inside I kind of have a regex that grabs the uh, rule other the nested rule subrule IDs um, and if there's no subrule IDs it means that we found we've completely evaluated that rule so we add it to our rules uh, we kind of like uh, do a little bit of sanitizing here to clean it up and then we remove that rule from the uh, array so we don't need to evaluate that anymore and if the if, if the rule does have subrule IDs then we need to go for each subrule sub rule ID we need to replace that subrule with uh, the actual evaluation from our rules uh, from our rules uh, object uh, if it exists that is if it doesn't then just skip that and here the replacement kind of like says hey if it includes an or then we need to add a parenthesis around it otherwise just uh, replace it with the actual subrule ID and I do this because I end up I end up with each rule is is a string like this and the convenient thing is about having this string is that you can feed it into the regex constructor and it's going to be a regex this the rule spec by itself is a regex so that's very convenient because we can just use the we can assume these are regexes and we can use that to match the against the messages uh, in our input so uh, I had to uh, surround the subrule with with parentheses because um, in, in case we have an or then it needs to match like all possible solutions if that makes sense uh, and then um, yeah that, that was kind of like for part one so I just evaluated the rules I ended up with this neat uh, rules object with uh, keys being the rule ID and the properties the the rules themselves and I just uh, go through the messages and I filter out the messages that passed the uh, the pass the test the first rule. So I kind of like pass the first rule here into the regex. Uh, I also make sure that uh, the beginning and the end of the strings are uh, part of. It needs to match the entire message uh, and no other uh, extra characters. And uh, then I just count the number of messages, and that was the part uh, the answer for part one pretty straightforward uh, then part two involved uh, something a little bit trickier um, it was a given from part one that there were no nested uh, there were no loops in the rules so a rule couldn't reference itself but in part two it could like for example here rule number eight changed from 42 to 42 or 42 and 8 uh, so in order to if you would evaluate eight you would end up with this and then you evaluate eight and then you would go back and you would uh, you could kind of like go in a loop infinitely um, but then they uh, the, the, the puzzle explicitly said that you only need to handle the rules you have so um, what I did I reused the evaluate rules function from first part but instead I just um, I figured that what I would do, I would expand rules 8, 11, and 0, because rule 0 is just 8 and 11, so it was three rules that we needed to work with. And I would expand them, and on each expansion, I would um, match against the messages. And if we don't have, and I would continue until uh, there's no more new messages that we uh, are, um, that are matching. 
So uh, we kind of like say, okay, um, ev evaluate the, the rule in a loop uh, as far as it's relevant for our input. Uh, as long as it's not more relevant, then we, we kind of like to stop. We don't, we don't need to do, go any further into the infinite territory because our, infinite, uh, our input is finite and that's the only thing we care about. So what happens here is that um, I have number of matched messages, a new number of matched messages, which is kind of like saying, hey, this is the number of matched messages from the previous iteration, and this is the number of mas matched messages from the current one. So um, I calculate the number of matched messages uh, with the rule set that we have from our first part. And then I replace the rules 8, 11, 8, 0 with their, with their changes. And I hard coded this because it was part of the puzzle uh, definition, so it was safe to hard code it. It was not give, it's not, it was not coming from an input or anything else. This was uh, uh, fixed. So I hard coded these rules, and then I, uh, given the new rules, I, um, I went through the messages again, and I uh, uh, matched those. And then I got a new number. And so if the old messages is not equal to the new uh, number of messages, then continue. And at some point, after a few iterations, uh, the, uh, the expansion of the loops didn't have any effect on how many messages you, uh, you, uh, we, yeah, we validated. So then these two would be equal. And then we kind of like reached the answer for part two. And uh, that was, in this case, was 424 messages uh, compared to 241 from the first part. So that was part two uh, and day 19. It was uh, relatively straightforward. As you can also see, the solution isn't that very, uh, uh, very long, just like around 60 lines. So that was, uh, that was fine. On to day uh, 20. Uh, the uh, the monster kind of like saga continued. Uh, we were on day twenty. We were already on our destination island, but we had to go through a uh, like a thick jungle, and so we were on a high speed train. But uh, in that train, we also had to uh, solve something uh, because um, so the monster was like walking around on this map and swimming, and uh, we had to. Uh, find out where it was so we got our puzzle input for the day 20 was a um, a bunch of tiles like a lot of tiles and a tile would be a section of a bigger image so uh, we had to construct the image um, eventually but for the first part you just got a, a few tiles and those tiles could be rotated it could be they could be flipped uh, and you had to find out like how they would uh, fit in together into the bigger image. Uh, so you had the tile, you could rotate it, flip it in any way so that it matched the border of the second tile. So as you can see here, the right border of this tile matches the left border of this tile. And the bottom border of this tile matches the bottom, uh, the uh, top bottom, uh, top border of this tile. And so then you had to like figure out how all these tiles fit together in one bigger image so that their borders match, uh, whether they were rotated or flipped or whatever. And then the answer for the first part was the IDs of those tiles in the corner, from the corner tiles. So given our in, uh, example input here, we had nine tiles. The IDs of uh, the corner tiles were this ones. And you had to, uh, the pro it was the product of those corner IDs. So you had to multiplicate those and then you would get a big number. So the way I solved day 20 was um, I figured, I was a little bit smart about this. I figured uh, corner tiles would only have two adjacent tiles. So like edge tiles would have three adjacent tiles, but the corner tiles were the only tiles that would have two adjacent tiles. And so therefore I had to figure out uh, which tiles uh, only had two possible uh, uh, border matches. So in code, what I did was I first parsed the tiles and I parsed the tiles. Uh, yeah, so given the input, I grabbed the title ID, tile ID, but I also grabbed the borders. So uh, the top border was just like the first array 
and the bottom border was the last array but then the left border was just like the first element of each array and the right border was the last element of each array so that's what's happening here kind of like uh grabbing the borders and i uh and i store them in an, uh, in an array of like borders and then for the past uh, for the first part i just calculate the neighbors so i keep a uh, track of the neighbors and i go through each tile and then i go uh, i have another loop inside for each tile i go through the remaining of the tiles and then i have another loop that goes for each border of the first tile and then each border of the second tile that we're comparing against so there's four loops here in total and then i say if um what i also do is i also reverse the tile border and this is a neat javascript trick to um reverse a string you can split it into an array and then an array has the reverse method so we use the reverse method and then we join the array back into a string so that's what we're doing if uh, javascript had a native reverse method for strings then we could use it directly but it only has it for array so we need to spring, uh, split our string into an array reverse it and then join it back together um, and um, we reverse the tiles for both the, the uh, we reverse the border for both the inner and the uh, outer tiles, both the tiles that we compare with, because the uh, we know uh, for given that the tile can be uh, rotated and flipped. In that case, the borders could be uh, could be reversed as well. So we need to account for that fact as well. And then here we have an if condition where we say if the tile border uh, or the reverse tile border matches the inner tile border or the reversed inner tile border then we have a match then we have we found two tiles that can be put together in any way we don't know we don't know which way uh, rotate or flip but they can be kind of like put next to each other therefore i uh, push those tiles into their neighbors and uh, the neighbors um, object eventually looks like this each key is a tile id and the value is an array of its neighbors uh, and then we can already see uh, tile 2, 1201 has two neighbors. Uh, some tiles have three neighbors and other tiles have four neighbors. So the answer for the first part was really simple. I filter out the tiles with two neighbors and I uh, reduce, I reduce to calculate their product. So multiply their tile IDs together. And that was the answer for the first part. The second part had a, a twist, uh, which... Uh, made my like clever approach from the past one completely refutable i couldn't use it for the first second part because for the first uh, for the second part you actually had to construct a map you had to construct the entire map uh, the borders were not part of the map so you had to remove all the borders on all sides and then you remove all the spaces so given this example input the map would look like this we removed spaces and then you had to find the sea monster in that map and the sea monster would look like this. Uh, and then, so here as an example, you could see uh, the sea monsters replaced with uh, capital O's. There were two sea monsters in the map. And the answer for the second part would be, after you reconstructed your map and you found out the sea monsters, how many, um, uh, yeah, how many hashtag style, how many hashtags do you find? So how many tiles are like, uh, they call it the habitat's water roughness because dot I assume is water and hashtag is like a rock or something that you cannot go through and uh, for this particular example input the water roughness was 273 meaning there were 273 hashtag tiles in there uh, excluded from the outside of the sea monsters um so yeah you had to actually reconstruct the map and uh in the the way i solved the first part is i kind of like was clever about oh, okay i just need to care about the corner tiles and i just uh grab those but in our like in the neighbors in the uh in the neighbors object i don't know like i know that tile 1097 has three uh neighbors but I have no idea on which sides each neighbor is and I have no idea like how this tile is needs to be rotated or flipped and the neighbors need to be rotated and flipped so that you know they all fit together. So from this I could 
not calculate the map. So I had to do, uh, I had to take a different approach, which I was on my way, but I haven't finished it yet. So uh, I didn't get the time. So the uh, recap for day 20 is part two. I, uh, I'm still owing you that one. I have to catch up with that one, but um, on a future days I will I will finish this one and I'll uh, show you what I came up with. I'm thinking my approach is to kind of like go through kind of like a similar uh, nested loops inside here as well, but instead of just storing the tile IDs, the, uh, instead of just storing the neighbors, I'll have to, uh, I'm thinking of storing, I already have that here, I'm thinking of storing the like each neighbor what it's top right bottom and left and then for the tile also storing it the way it was rotated or flipped so if i have if i have the neighbors uh for each border and if i have the the for the tile if i know how it's rotated and flipped for each tile then i can eventually go on and construct the map um so that's kind of like my approach that i was thinking of i just need to code it uh, and see if it works uh, but I'll show you that in a future stream. So that was for day 20. Let's uh, yeah, that was the recaps of day 19 and 20. I Hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat I'll be happy to answer uh, And then let's uh, yeah, let's go on with day 21 uh, because we'll have to uh, use all the time we get last five days of advent of code uh, and they're pretty tough uh, they're really challenging so we can see day 21 is kind of like, I think we arrived in our train station here. This is the train track. We got in our train station, so we're almost at our uh, holiday resort, almost arrived there. In four days we'll get there, so probably we need to take a shuttle bus or maybe a walk, something like that. All right, day 21, let's see what it is about. Uh, allergen assessment. So you reach the train's last stop and the closest you can get to your vacation island without getting wet. Uh, there aren't even any boats here, but nothing can stop you now. Uh, you build a raft, uh, so uh, we need to get on a different island. We build a raft. Yeah, you just need a few days worth of food for your journey. <laughs> uh, you don't speak the local language, so you can't read any ingredients lists. However, sometimes allergens are listed in a language you do understand. You should be able to use this information to, to determine which ingredient contains which allergen and work out which foods are safe to take with you on your trip because we are apparently allergic to some stuff. You start by compiling a list of foods, uh, which is the puzzle input for today. It's a list of foods. One food per line. Each line includes that food's ingredients list, followed by some of all, some or all of the allergens the food contains. All right, each allergen is found in exactly one ingredient. Each ingredient contains zero or one allergen. Allergens aren't always marked, so that's important to know. When they're listed as in contains nuts, shellfish, after an ingredients list, the ingredient that contains each listed allergen will be somewhere in the corresponding ingredients list. However, even if an allergen isn't listed, the ingredient that contains that allergen could still be present. Maybe they forgot to label it, or maybe it was labeled in a language you don't know. Interesting. For example, considering the following list of foods. So, it's some, so we get some random strings here. And then we get, between parentheses, we get the allergens. Uh, not all allergens, but some of them. So it contains dairy and fish. The first food in the list has four ingredients written in a language you don't understand. While the food might contain other allergens, a few allergens of the food definitely contains are listed afterwards, dairy and fish. The first step is to determine which ingredients cannot possibly contain any of the allergens in any food of your list. So I have to filter out the ingredients that... Uh, uh, the ingredients, so the entire line is like a food item and each uh, consisting of ingredients and the allergens of those ingredients. So I need to filter out the ingredients. So individual stuff like these, uh, random strings that uh, cannot possibly have allergens inside them. 
in the above example none of the ingredients KFCDS this one NHMS uh, and so on can contain an allergen counting the number of times I wonder why though I'll, I'll go to that in a bit uh, counting the number of times any of these ingredients appear in any ingredients list produces five They all appear once each except SBZZF which appears twice All right, so when I filter out the uh, Ingredients which cannot contain any allergens I Need to count them how many times does they appear in total in the entire list and that's gonna be the answer for the first part Determine which ingredients cannot possibly contain any of the allergens in your list. How many times do any of those ingredients appear? All right, and uh, something I haven't really uh, understood is that how did they figure out which allergens cannot possibly contain any, uh, which ingredients cannot possibly contain any allergens? Probably it's in the description here. Uh, 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 uh. Here, each allergen is found in exactly one ingredient. Each ingredient contains zero or one allergen. So, if I'm assuming correctly, we know that an allergen maps to one ingredient, one-on-one -on -one mapping. An allergen cannot be found in more ingredients than one, and one ingredient cannot have more than one allergen. So it's kind of like one-to-one -one mapping. So given that, we know that, for example, here we have two ingredients and we know that there's a soy allergen. So then we know that either this ingredient or this ingredient has, is, uh, 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 contains soy. Uh, and then, given a larger input, well, like, here we can go, yeah. Uh, a larger input dairy we know that either one of these four allergens contain dairy and then here either uh, one of these four contains fish and so on so i guess you could say uh let me see uh we can look at for example fish so either one of these three can have fish and either one of these four can have fish so we can do an AND operation and we can exclude ingredients that are not in both these uh, these uh, foods. Because we know if an ingredient is only in this food and not in this one or vice versa, then we know that ingredient cannot, be, cannot have the allergen fish. Otherwise, allergen fish wouldn't be displayed here. So uh, let's see, this one is present in both. This one is not, so we exclude that one. This one is present in both, and this one is not. So fish must be in either this ingredient or in this one. Uh, so we eliminate this one. And then we can do the same thing for when we compare with dairy. Instead with dairy, we can say uh, whatever is in here must not be in here. Otherwise, this food item would also have fish uh, allergen. So we can go through that. Does this uh, appear in here? Nope. Does this appear here? Yes. It appears in here so we can eliminate it therefore this uh, ingredient maps to this allergen to the fish allergen and then we can do the same thing for dairy uh, actually we know already for the soy uh, because this maps to fish uh, soy cannot be in here so therefore some uh, soy must be in here so then we have this for soy and this is fish so if this is soy and if uh, then dairy must be like either one of these three So that's kind of like the process of elimination that we have to go through and Then we're gonna be left out with uh, Ingredients that don't have any allergies mapped to them We need to save those uh, and then we need to count how many times they appear in our input and that's gonna be our uh, Solution for today. So let's grab our puzzle input, which is huge Let's save it. Uh, day, we're gonna save it in our working directory here, day 21. Uh, that's great. We have 43 food items. And some of them have a lot of ingredients. 
And then at the end, we have uh, a list of allergens in parentheses. And those aren't that many. So we don't seem to have that many unique allergens. So I guess we're going to have a lot of ingredients because there's many more ingredients than allergens. We're going to have many more ingredients which uh, do not have allergens. So our input answer is going to be in the hundreds or so, I think. All right. Uh, so let's first uh, parse our input. I'm also going to grab the example input because I'm going to use that to, uh, to test if our solution is working and also debug. Uh, debug uh, the program if it doesn't work. All right, I'm gonna remove the last line here as well, so we have a clean array. All right, let me split this to the right, move this, make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so how do we need to parse our our input? We need to for one, we need to parse it by new lines. So we have an array of foods. And then let's kind of like do that. Let's do that. We say foods, foods. And then that's going to be that. And then inside here, we can say foods. Um, foods. Uh, map and it's gonna be food and then we can say food splits by a space and if we split by a space we're gonna have an array of ingredients and the last item of that array is gonna be the allergens so we can uh, do it like this const we can use array destructuring in here and we're gonna say the last item is gonna be allergens but the oh wait a second this is gonna be split as well so no we're not gonna split by space we are going to split by uh, something with an open Mm, we can also use regex to grab everything inside there. We could use regex to grab the allergens and then everything outside or we could use split. Let me see which is faster for me to code. Uh, if I use split and I split by uh, space open parentheses, I'm going to have a left hand side. I'm gonna have a right hand side and the right hand side is gonna be uh, it's gonna end actually let me look at the input here the right hand side is gonna end with closing parentheses and then oh wait I also know that each allergen list uh, kind of starts with contains the word contains Yeah contains and the actual allergen is after that so I could even split by um, Space open parentheses contains uh, and space and Then I'll have to just remove the last Parentheses and then split by comma space to get the allergens. I Think I'm gonna do that. It's a little bit easier let me just uh, quickly uh, uh, let me quickly see if that will work. So I'm gonna select this part that I want to split by, and then that's a neat thing in VS Code. VS Code is gonna highlight all the occurrences of what I've just selected. So I can just go on through the list, go through the list, and see if that uh, appears in every every line and it seems to it seems to appear in every line yeah so then we can use that to split all the elements with because we know that's gonna repeat for each element so let's do that we're gonna split by open parentheses contains 
space and another space in the beginning. Great. And then we're gonna get the left hand side is gonna be ingredients. And right hand side is gonna be unparsed allergens. Because we'll need to parse this. So I'm gonna say const allergens is unparsed allergens. And I'm gonna have to remove the last closing parentheses, um, which is always the last item anyway. So I can slice the array by minus one. I think that's going to give us a clean uh, a, a string without closing parentheses. And then I split by comma space. And then we should get an array of aller allergens. So let's, uh, um, let's confirm that our parsing is working before we go on. Let's assign this to a variable. Um, just foods parsed. I don't know what to call it. And then console log. I'm just adding a console log here for I'm not really using it, but I'm using it to add a breakpoint. Let's make this a little bit smaller. And then run our debugger. All right, let's see what it looks like now. Undefined. Okay, so that. Oh, wait, because I'm not returning anything, of course. And then return. Uh, what I'm going to return. I'm just going to return an array with ingredients, the first item, and allergens, the second item. Yep, let's run again. All right, so we have uh, an array of elements, and each element is a food item. Food item. And that food item is another array uh, which consists of ingredients. Oh, I need to parse these as well. Let me parse those as well. So let me rename this to. Um, unparsed ingredients and I'm gonna add a line here I'm gonna say ingredients is unparsed ingredients not allergens split by a space let's have those in an array as well all right so we have two arrays that makes sense first array is the array of ingredients and the other one is the array of uh, array of allergens and I already can see a bug because the array of allergens is only one item. So let's see what's going on. First array is array of ingredients. That looks good. Second array is, oh, closing parentheses. So our slice isn't working as expected. Let me pull up the docs and see what uh, the slice actually does. I thought it was minus one and then it would go uh, at the end of the array. Returns a shallow copy, which is good. Start to end, end not included, where start and end represent the index of items in that array. Okay, so if start is a negative, a negative index can be used, indicating an offset from the end of the sequence. Slice minus two extracts the last two elements. Oh, okay, so it's only that element. Okay, so I need to, instead, I need to, I know I can use another different one, but instead it needs to be, instead of uh, minus one, it needs to be from the beginning until the last one. So I'm going to do unparsed allergens length minus one. I think that will do. Yeah, seems like it's working. So we have uh, an array of allergens, wet sesame nuts, fish, dairy, sesame, peanuts, Dairy fish eggs. It looks good. Awesome. So uh, we have something that we can work with now. We have something we can work with now. What I'm gonna do is uh, can I just copy value and kind of like I'm gonna spin up my playground, run JS. Let's get. Oh, why did I close it? Let's get rid of everything inside here. I'm actually making the same mistake. Or, oh wait, it's closing by itself. That's not good. Is it? Okay. Um, it's kind of like a huge array tool. Um, 
because I wanted to like paste this in here to have it like to see it I don't have to do it here I can just make a new um, okay, put it in here I want to kind of like see what I'm working with let's remove all the elements except two and we can wait this is not huh I got the wrong variable here it is okay good enough I'm gonna refer to this uh, while I'm working so I can have oh that's why I wanted to have it here uh, ingredients okay good uh, let me that'll be fine all right, so we parse our foot. Uh, let's see what we need to do. So the logic that I said was, we have given a, we already have it in here. So we know that dairy and fish, so what do we care about? Do we care about allergens to ingredients or ingredients to allergens? I guess ingredients to allergens because we'll need to it's we need to figure out which ingredients do not have allergens. So we need to so we know then if you go off uh, uh, if you iterate through each element, we know that uh, 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 um, we know that each ingredient in here can either be dairy or fish. After, on the first iteration. On the second iteration, we know that each ingredient can be dairy. Only dairy. So if you find an already existing element, we, ingredient, I mean, we need to um, do some logic in here. We need to say any ingredient that's not in this list needs to be removed. So then we're left with only dairy. So I'm kind of thinking I'll need to have a data structure that will have, I could use a map or just this object that would do as well, that would have the keys of that object be the ingredients. and the values would be an array of possible allergens. And as I will go through the array, I will, um, the, the, the values of each ingredient, so the possible allergens of each ingredient will fill, be filtered out and will change until eventually one is left. I think. Uh, so maybe that's what we can start with. So let's have our object in here called possible allergens. And yeah, let's use that. And then we'll have to use a for loop, for const because uh, we're going through each item so it's going to say food item let me rename this to food item because food is what is food food item better so as we go through each food item uh, foods so comes food item of foods and then we'll need to oh we can already use the array structure here ingredients and allergens awesome so we have our ingredients and allergens and then we can say um, let's first construct the object so for uh, const perhaps I can I'm gonna do it like this I'm sure this may be a cleaner way to do this but I don't know it 
uh, I can't come up with it right now. So I'm just gonna use a for loop. Because I, what I wanna do is I wanna, I have this list of ingredients and I wanna uh, kind of like create the object. Uh, create the object. So, uh, well, I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to, but I will do. Okay, so for cost ingredients uh, of ingredients. So for each ingredient, for each ingredient, I can say if that ingredient doesn't exist. So if we could say const. How about I change this into just allergens and then I name this in, it's not allergens but is well it is allergens uh, what I call I can call this allergens but I can call this um, I think variable naming is really important because um, uh, I noticed that when I tend to uh, be sloppy about naming variables and not uh, spending a little bit of time to give them something that's sensible, a name that's sensible, down the road, um, it's harder for me to understand what my program that I just wrote is doing because um, ambiguous variable names don't really help me in, in figuring out what it's going actually going on. So I spend, I tend to to spend a little bit more time in uh, making sure that my variables are named in a, something that makes sense to me and hopefully to other people that are reading my code as well so that down the road I um, I make my life easier when I need to debug and I need to figure out what uh, the interworkings are of a program so uh, I find this uh, important so this makes sense to name it as allergens because we're gonna say this, that's, that's going to be the allergens of an ingredient. Uh, hmm. There's allergens, allergens, but an ingredient can only have one. So what's the object going to look like? The object is going to be keys of ingredients with their allergens and a bunch of ingredients will not have any allergens. So it's going to be ingredients, ingredients. Yeah, let's name this to ingredient ingredient allergen ingredient allergen because an ingredient can only have one allergen I don't know I'm, I'm sure there's a there's a better name in the field I'm not in the field of foods and consumables wait that specifies what like uh, ingre uh, the ingredients yeah it's fine uh, I'll have to stick with that and then allergens it's gonna be that allergen or s can be more okay and that's gonna be ingredient allergen well let me make this plural how about ingredients to allergen mapping it's kind of like an it yeah it's a mapping of ingredients to its allergen. And then, we can, yeah. and then we're gonna have, yeah, let me see which ingredient, this one. So if, so we're gonna have several ifs. Uh, first if is, if there's no allergen, means uh, we it's the first time that we are uh, going through that ingredient that we found that ingredient so let's just uh, add the allergens of that ingredient so we can say ingredient to allergen is equal to ingredient uh, all right is equal to uh, the allergens just like that yeah just the array of allergens Otherwise, uh, if there is an allergen, which means uh, that we now have to, 
How about I do an else if allergen is small? Length uh, is bigger than one. So if, if uh, the allergens are more than one, then we need to do something. If it's just one, then we, I think we actually found that allergen or that ingredient. Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, because, ooh, okay, it's gonna be, I just found out it's gonna be, um, yeah, we're gonna have ingredients with just one allergen, but we also gonna have allergens with more ingredients. Maybe I need to do the mapping the other way around. I think I need to do the mapping the other way around. It's gonna be allergen two ingredients, uh, two ingredients. Uh, And let me think if I end up with um, if I end up with an object here that has the the uh, 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 yeah that's gonna work if I end up with an object here that has a keys being the, the allergens and the values the ingredients then I can go over through my uh, list of ingredients and I can say I can I can do a lookup if it finds that ingredient mapped to any allergen that'll work okay so let's uh swap this around i'm gonna say allergen to ingredient and doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. so that's still the same this is gonna be ingredients or ingredients Maybe that's more ingredients or ingredients. No, I'll just keep it like that. Um, okay, so if it doesn't have an ingredient yet, then what I need to do is I need to... Um, okay, so instead of looping through the ingredients here, I'm gonna loop through the allergens. All right, so for each allergen, if there's no ingredients, then uh, the possible ingredients for that allergen will be just a array of ingredients. And if the allergen does have more than one ingredient, then we kind of need to... Um, Okay, so what? Uh, so if the allergen already has more than one ingredient, so for example, on our second iteration, we're gonna have dairy, and dairy we already found it before. It can be this ingredients. So what we need to do is we need to exclude any ingredients that aren't present in this current list because. Then we excluded them for not uh, being possibly related to dairy. So in code, that's gonna look like um, allergen to ingredient, allergen equal to ingredients I'm gonna I need to I have two arrays and I need to get their end. I know there's I can use lodash, uh, which does have a neat method for that. But so far in Advent of Code, I haven't used any third-party libraries. Uh, just a second, getting rid of a bot here. Uh, so far, I haven't used any thirty library uh, third-party libraries, uh, and I've done everything natively and i would like to keep it that way because we're almost at the end of advent of code and it'd be awesome to say at the end of the event i solved advent of code 2020 with just native javascript uh, 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 um, what i need to do is i don't think there's a native method in javascript which is gonna take an array 
and it's gonna give me the only those items which occur in both in both arrays This one happens in there. Yeah. Cuz we can also exclude we can also exclude this one because this one is not in here. And if this one would be dairy, then this food item would not have dairy as a allergen. So yeah, we only need the items that are present in both arrays. Only need the ingredients that are present in both arrays. I know includes, but includes except, um, yeah, accepts one value, accepts a single value, it doesn't accept, it would be awesome if there would be a version of includes that accepts an array as an argument. Uh, I can do a filter, that will work. I can do a filter, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Some. No, yeah. I'll do a filter, that'll work. Okay, so do, 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 do. Uh, maybe. So it's gonna be ingredients. What are we looking at here? Ingredients of. Oh, I see. I have kind of like an ambiguous name here. Because these are the ingredients for that allergen. And these are the ingredients for that food item. Food item ingredients. Allergen ingredients. If there's no... Okay, I'm gonna rename this to allergen ingredient. That's better. Okay, uh, and therefore, uh, allergen ingredient is gonna be um, in allergen ingredients. Ingredients. Uh, filter because we know it's more than one so filter and we're gonna have ingredients let's say allergen let me kind of like get rid of this one to the right so allergen ingredient um, yeah I'll need to have this plural because when I'm gonna map, it's gonna be singular. All right. Um, um, I'm gonna extract this into a variable, otherwise it's gonna be too far to the right. Uh, what I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call this new allergen ingredients lack of better naming and then uh, allergen ingredients filter allergen ingredients allergen ingredients includes maybe I can put this to the second line because so we can see includes um, uh, no the other way around ingredients includes Allergen ingredient. All right, and then new allergen ingredients. Map that here. Good. And what do we do if we found if there's only one? Well, we don't have to do anything, do we? So let's say, for example, we are here on our second iteration. After this, we 
uh, we end up with uh, this appears in both okay so we after this iteration we know that we're gonna end up with dairy having only one ingredient so what if we found if we found dairy in a different um, I guess allergen ingredients uh, for constant yeah yeah if we found dairy here then we didn't need to do anything with dairy because we already found the matching ingredient for it so we could skip it we could skip it okay uh, let's see what this uh, gives us uh, we have a breakpoint here uh, we have uh, our variable I want to see what will happen if we run the program uh, something yeah I'm not using foods parsed so let me rename this to foods unparsed And I'm going to rename this to foods. And then we're going to use foods in here. All right, that should work. It doesn't. Uh, what's our bug? Output. It doesn't output it. I'm just going to run it. The debugger doesn't, if there's an error and it crashes, it doesn't tell me why. So I have to run a program here. Cannot access alerts, alert and ingredients before initialization. Line 18 here. Oh, we have a name clash. We have a name clash and that's interesting because it should be this. Allergen to ingredients, yeah. Okay. Let's run again. Okay, it runs without errors. So let's see what we end up with here. Allergen to ingredients. All right, I'm gonna do it. Actually, I'm gonna do it for example input so we can uh, verify that it's working correctly because our own input uh, is much larger so it's harder to verify okay so we have three allergens that's correct dairy we know dairy has uh wait dairy has uh, one ingredient it's already found uh the ingredient for dairy but fish and soy still has two Something else that we need to do is if um, if we find an ingredient in our uh, that's already mapped to an allergen, we need to remove that ingredient as well because we need to get rid of this ingredient um, in here. So we're going to need to add another conditional. Uh -uh -uh. Um, what would be need is to grab all the ingredients that have already been uh, mapped or no I can just go through ingredients yeah which I am in here actually I can do this at the top I can do this at the top so for each ingredient Oh no, this is for each food item. Uh, this is for each allergen. Let me think. 
where would this the, be the most sensible thing to do? So we're uh, iterating through food items in here. And we have an array of ingredients and an array of allergens. And then here we're going through each allergen and we're doing the stuff that, that's good. Ingredients. Uh, I guess I could have another for loop that loops through each ingredient as well. Or maybe I can avoid a for loop. Um, because I need, I'm thinking of a way to make this easier in programming. How do I? Maybe I could, it would be easier if I had two maps. If I had a map that, uh, the current one, allergen to ingredient, and also if I had another map, ingredient to allergen, uh, then it would be easier. But then the problem is the access, it would be easier to code, but then an access, uh, find out uh, the info that I need. But then I'll, I'll have to keep track of two maps. Whenever I change one, I need to change the other one as well. Because now I kind of have two sources of, tr of truth and they need to be in sync. So that kind of like makes it more complicated as well if you keep track of two, if you have two maps. So maybe I can avoid that by just saying, um, I mean, I could go through the allergen to ingredient map and filter out and, and create an array of ingredients that only have, the ver that have already been mapped to their allergens. I could do that. And when I have that array, I can go through, through um, the current ingredients and remove any of those ingredients that are, are uh, already, uh, that are in the array. Okay. <laughs> And then what do I do with those? Do I like say, do I change the array? I need to change the array. No, I need to. Oh wait, I need to remove those from the actual allergen to ingredients map. That's interesting. No, wait, I found a better solution. This is actually irrespective of the food item looping so here here at the end for each allergen i kind of need to do some cleanup as well maybe i add it after this so i do it after each allergen or I do it after all the allergens, but I need to go through this uh, object and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through that object. Yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through that object and I'm gonna have another object that actually has the definite values for ingredients to map and I'm going to use that to kind of like filter out those yeah okay so this is going to become clear in a little bit uh, I'm going to do this ingredients to allergen and I know this is a finite list but this is a possible list so maybe rename this to Allergen to possible ingredient. And rename this to possible ingredients. All right. 
so then we have if there's no possible ingredients then add the ingredients good if there's more than one possible ingredients then we need to do some some filtering some uh, elimination and then we save the new uh, possible ingredients New possible ingredients uh, to that one that's good and then do I do it let me think do I do it after so after one after we went through this allergen we're gonna have let me see how that looks like Um, so this is empty that's good after one iteration we have dairy in there and then we're gonna have the other fish okay and then we go to the next food item and then we have Dairy is ruled out. Maybe you can't see it here, but here. There is. Wait, maybe I can. Here. Dairy is ruled out. And you have fish. So here. I need to insert the code. Whenever it's possible that we've uh, eliminated some. Which is going to be in here whenever there's a possibility that we find a match between an allergen and ingredient that's what we need to add our code that's going to do the clean up uh, which could be here if yeah which is exactly here well it could be there uh otherwise it's already one what i can do after that if um, I can actually add an aside if new possible ingredients is one that's yeah that's a smart thing to do actually whenever this is one we found our ingredient so if new possible ingredients uh, length equals one we found our ingredient so we removed that ingredient from all the other um, allergens yep that's gonna be the solution so uh, found ingredients new possible ingredients all right so we need to remove this found ingredient from uh, uh, uh. so we might not even need this uh, map um, found ingredient so we go through uh, let me see I need to go through this uh, uh, yeah I'm gonna do object Object values. Will that work? Let me see. Not sure. Object values. Poss uh, allergen to possible ingredients. And that's going to give us possible ingredients. I'm 
I'm not sure if the map is gonna work here on the erase because I, the erase might be a reference, uh, passed by reference or passed by value. If they're passed by value, it's not gonna work. Mm. Yeah, I can probably see that it's not gonna work. Okay, uh, so I'll need to do a uh, four each, I guess. Uh, yeah, let's let's use a loop for const uh, possible uh, ingredients for op object entries allergen. All right, and then we can get rid of this. And then uh, we're gonna need our allergen in here. But we're gonna have a name collision. We're gonna have a name collision. Uh, so we cannot name this allergen. Um, What do I call this? Inner allergen, nested allergen, another allergen. <laughs> mm. Allergen, because we're gonna clean this allergen. Uh, we're gonna allergen to clean up. Allergen to clean up. Maybe if I rename this to a uh, how about if I rename this to uh, food food allergens, and I rename this uh, food item allergens, food item allergens. That's good. And I rename this to food item allergen. Food um, allergen there we go and then in here we can just uh, use allergen that'll be fine all right so um, we say allergen to possible ingredients allergen is gonna be possible ingredients without um, without this one so we can say filter possible ingredient so let's yeah possible ingredient and possible ingredient is not equal to um, Uh, new possible ingredients. Uh, no, found ingredients. Found ingredients. There. If it's not equal to it, which is true, then we keep it. If it's equal, then we uh, we need to get rid of it because we uh, we already found it for a different allergen. So that's what I uh, maybe I do a return here. So that's kind of like what needs to happen. Let's. Uh, Let's see if uh, it's working. All right, so I'm removing it for all of them. So it is working, but I need to add another condition now. Uh, I need to skip what I'm doing for... So I'm going through all the allergens found an ingredient so I found an ingredient with matched to an allergist and I'm going through all of them but I need to skip the uh, the current allergen so if um, food item allergen is not equal to allergen yeah then uh, do this otherwise uh, not because otherwise you're gonna remove the current ingredient from the current allergen which we just which we just added so we want to avoid that yeah looks good so we have uh, actually we can get rid of this one now we did not end up using it 
we have uh, allergen to possible ingredients we have dairy it's that ingredient that ingredient awesome yeah we have all our ingredients mapped so let's run it for our uh, input for our larger input and see uh, if uh, that gives us what we want um, so we only have one two three four five six seven eight we have eight uh, allergens in our large input. This input over here, very large. Uh, we have eight different types of allergens. And we did find the matching ingredients for a few of them, but not all of them. And I can see, for example, VCCKP hasn't been removed from the others. Um, so we still need to add some little bit of code that uh, removes them. I wonder, <clears throat> I wonder if perhaps this is better placed outside. Because when do we do this? We do this when we find an allergen we remove it from all the other ones. So when we found dairy, when we found that this ingredient matches to dairy, uh, we should have went in and removed it from all the others. But, Perhaps we added it back later on. That's a possibility, yeah. So something that I'm uh, noticing here is that um, we, so we kind of like exclude the ingredients that are not here, but we also need to exclude those ingredients that have already been matched to an ingredient, uh, to an allergen. So that's a better place to place it. Uh, 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 okay, let's uh, let's see. Where can we best add this? So here we're uh, 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 new possible ingredients. Ingredients includes. Okay, so we get like the ones that are present in both both food items uh, but also we need to allergen ingredients uh, uh, uh. we might need that mapping after all we might need that mapping after all uh, yeah let's add a mapping I'm gonna use it uh, in the in here I'm gonna use it in this filter so ingredient to allergen and what I'm gonna do is uh, when we found an ingredient we can add it in here so we're gonna say ingredient to allergen food ingredients Oh no, found ingredients. Yep. Is equal to, uh, so we found our ingredient and which allergen is it? Food item allergen, I guess. Yep. Good. And then um, in here, I'm gonna say, uh, includes and is not present and is not present in uh, already found ingredients. So ingredient to allergen, uh, is not present. Uh, current ingredient, I guess, what are allergen? Allergen ingredients, there. 
I think that should do the trick. Let's uh, debug again. Uh, it doesn't do the trick. So, trying to see uh, ingredient to allergen. Hmm, that's weird. We only get one. Uh, one allergen, one ingredient. We should get more. Ingredient to allergen. New possible ingredients, length zero. Filter includes, yeah, and is not present. Yeah. Allergen ingredients is not present. In ingredient to allergen yeah and then new possible uh, ingredients is length one then we found it but here what I also need to do maybe I need to add this this one uh, not again uh -uh -uh. Yeah, because here we are uh, kind of like, yeah, we also need to add it here. Here at this end. Uh, if. Whatever. So if this uh, length equal to one then let me see I'm gonna well, I'm gonna leave this like this um, because in here we also could end up with allergens uh, with only one ingredient so um, we need to so that's what I said earlier about keeping two maps in sync that's what I'm trying to do here I have another mapping ingredient to allergen and I need to keep it in sync with uh, whatever is in here in the first one therefore whenever I change this one I need to make sure that the other one is in sync so I changed the one uh, that one in here but I know I don't need to do anything with here uh, with the other one because this one only happens on the first occurrence and we always gonna get uh, we're always gonna get um, multiple arrays so we don't need to care about that here but when we change it here uh, we say if it's equal to one, then it's actually we need to change it here, but we also change it here. Therefore, um, if we, if the new, uh, yeah, if this ends up being one, If this ends up being one, which I kind of like do it here, um, length equals one, then I need to add that uh, allergen to the ingredients. And it's gonna be this is not readable at all, but I know it. I know what it does, so bear with me. I might refactor this later. Um, awesome. We get what we want. Uh, no, we're still missing X. Why are we missing X? Um, VCC KP. I'm thinking uh, if this still doesn't work, 
You sure have? Ingredients are allergens. So I added here fish. Uh, so, but here we have this ingredient and it's mapped to dairy. Why did we not remove this ingredient from eggs? For some reason. For some reason. Okay, let me uh, go through my logic. Somewhere I'm not. Uh, I'm not doing things in the right order so I'm gonna add some comments to make it clear for myself um, this goes through each food item as we go through each food item We go through each food item allergen. All right. Um, so we kind of like go through each allergen here, and then we grab the possible ingredients of that allergen. First time, time we encounter allergen. Safe current ingredients as possible ingredients. So that's what's happening here. Um, All right, um, what we're doing here is we are let me add this to a new line as well. So okay. So what are we doing here? Uh, what are we doing here? We have our possible ingredients and we filtered those that are not. Okay. So remove possible ingredients that aren't present in current ingredients. And therefore, there or cannot be associated with allergen. Therefore, how do you spell therefore? Therefore, therefore, no idea. Okay. Uh, so we have our new, and also this uh, new move possibly that our parents can use. Or, have already oh as I type this I'm realizing maybe I should do this in a different section let me see yeah it makes more sense to do this something somewhere else this part over here kind of like at the end or something Because here we're also removing the ingredients that have been mapped to current allergen. Or, or I switch this arrays uh, around these two. 
instead of going through the possible ingredients I go through the ingredients uh, yeah I'm gonna try that so remove ingredients that aren't present in possible ingredients no mixing things up here no that won't work that won't work yeah so I'm gonna have to remove this and do it somewhere else let's just paste it here I'm gonna reuse it uh, I have to do this somewhere else. Um, so what I'm saying here, remove possible ingredients that aren't present in the current ingredients and therefore cannot be associated with allergen. Yeah. And then new possible ingredients. Uh, I assign them there. New possible ingredients and I'm thinking at the start of each food item no at the start of each allergen I kind of like do a cleanup here yeah Okay, let's um, and that's what we're doing here. So that, that's clear. Um, I'm gonna go to that in a little bit. Uh, found what does this do? So found a an ingredient. Uh, found an uh, a matching ingredient. Found a matching yeah matching a matching ingredient of this allergen for this allergen okay and so our allergen is what are we looking at here food item allergen good so new possible ingredients equals one food ingredient uh, and then we kind of also remove that so when we found a matching ingredient for this allergen, what we do is go through all the other allergens and remove it. Remove this ingredient. from other allergens found the ingredient const allergen possible ingredients we have a name clash here there's two possible ingredients What if I don't do this at all? What if I just, uh, what if I say when I found a matching ingredient, I just use the, I use the mapping ingredient to allergen. <clears throat> but then in here, or kind of like at the end, um, I, ingredient to allergen so what if I somewhere uh, let me see food item allergen um, what if instead I do this um, let's see uh, food item allergen 
as I go through each allergen at the end found ingredients well this is what's basically doing now it's removing object entries allergen to possible ingredients possible ingredients allergen Instead of doing this, we can say possible ingredients, allergen to possible ingredients. And then we can do a filter here. Filter, possible ingredients. Um, let's add this to a new line. <clears throat> possible ingredient is not found in uh, ingredients to allergen. Yeah, that'll do, no? What if I, so if I just get, let's comment this out. No, I need this. Yeah, because now instead of doing this at the end every, for each allergen and then go through all the allergens when you find, what if I just do it at the beginning? So when I get the possible ingredient, grab possible ingredients of allergen uh, and exclude those that have already, that already have an, uh, an allergen, that have uh, those that have already been assigned to um, to an allergen so I do that already here so therefore okay that made that makes uh, sense so far for me let's see if that fixes our well, there's a error so we can read property filter of undefined line 26 oh I see uh, because this can be zero as well. Mm. This can be zero as well. Um. And I just found something else. I also need to filter this part. All right. Uh, I'm gonna move that in here. And I'm gonna say ingredients filter. Ingredients is not ingredient to allergen ingredients is not present first time in content i just save current ingredients possible ingredients without those except those ingredients except those ingredients that have already already been assigned to an allergen so that's what's happening here and then i can also do that kind of like here And I'm gonna have some filters, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, possible ingredients. Um, remove possible ingredients that aren't present in current ingredients and therefore that cannot be associated with allergen. That aren't present in current ingredients or or have already been assigned 
to an allergen and therefore cannot be associated with allergen awesome awesome okay this should let's see if uh, we have errors no allergen to green this is not defined Spons, uh, yeah because it's here Line 60. Wait. Uh, why did I rename that? Possible ingredients. Yeah. No, this needs to be possible ingredients. And let's. Oh, we'll keep this. And I just figured out uh, that. Oh no, that's gonna fix it for that. I think. Okay, lines. Uh, where's our error come from? And uh, 59. 59. Oh, wait. I copy pasted this, of course. Yeah. Does it run? It runs. Okay. Let's see what's going on now. Hopefully, I fixed the uh, issue. Allergen to possible ingredients. Doesn't seem like it. No, still not fixed. Uh, I think it's because. I think it's because here this ingredients includes both and ingredient to allergen. It's not a possible ingredient. Right. Maybe, okay, I think, uh, 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 uh. so what was the issue? It was the issue that we have a couple of ingredients. How many allergens do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're missing a couple of in, in, uh, ingredients matched to allergens here. We have eight allergens. We only have five ingredients. So I guess uh, the error must be coming from here that we're only assigning it when we have new possible ingredients length one how about we do a different thing how about we extract this to to the outside yeah how about we do this to the outside uh so let's mm -hmm. i'm gonna copy this So it needs to be here at the end of each at the end of each uh, 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 yep uh, for each allergen okay food item allergen allergen to possible ingredients food item allergen length if length equals one then we keep our our other mapping in sync by saying Found ingredient. Ingredient to allergen, found ingredient, food item allergen. Like this. Uh, will this fix? Let me copy, put the description here. Is this gonna fix our issue? Let's see. Error. 
Unexpected end of inputs. Do, do, do. Did I forget to comment out something? Each line uh, doesn't say. Uh, where is it coming from? Maybe I need to. So, oh wait, we have closing parentheses for those, for those. If, oh, okay, I forgot to add a closing parenthesis for this, if else. So, wait. This needs to come to that. Okay. Works. Did we fix it? No, still not. Uh, after each allergen we keep it in sync why is this not keeping it in sync why because well because oh yeah because these has more makes sense yeah these three eggs fish and wet we haven't okay so we're not removing so our bug isn't there at least but i'm gonna leave that here anyway um Okay, our bug isn't there but our bug is somewhere here because we haven't removed this ingredient from dairy which is weird because dairy is in here VCCKP it should be removed here ingredients filter ingredient Ingredient to allergen. Possible. Okay, so on the first encounter we added there. And on other encounters we also ex excluded from here. Possible ingredients includes and does not include. If it finds the ingredients, then this should return false. No, includes and if this is true, then that's false. So yeah, new possible ingredients will not have that one. And therefore, yeah. possible ingredients uh, maybe if there's no possible ingredients wait this should be right okay uh, this should be length bigger than one what happens if you ha have one possible ingredient Hmm. Oh yeah, then we have the already we already found. Then we already found uh we don't need to or maybe we do. Let me think. Uh food item allergen, we're going through each allergen. So if that allergen already uh, has one possible ingredient We don't need to do anything with it. So we can skip it. So if possible ingredients equals one, possible ingredients.
found ingredients food item allergen let's run this again Oh wait, but that's gonna change, so, no. Okay. I'm stuck here somewhere. Trying to figure out uh, where the gap is in my logic, where the bug is. Maybe I could, um, do I see the same bug? I do see the same bug in example input. Maybe I just can just go to the example input and figure out step by step what's going on. Um, can I wrap this? Appearance. Yeah, okay, I'm uh, gonna wrap it a little bit here. Okay, let's uh, go through our example input. I'm gonna add a breakpoint. Where I'm gonna add a breakpoint? Uh, here, before it goes in there. And then one here. And then, uh, 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 also before it goes in there, and um, and before it assigns it. Okay. All right. So possible ingredients undefined. There's no possible ingredients. Our current ingredients are that one for the first food item. Uh, the food item allergen we're looking at is dairy we filter out anything that's not in there therefore we're gonna have this one with dairy can I somehow here at the end return value true block ingredients Okay, I see what's going on. I'm gonna remove this breakpoint. So possible, I uh, here we have dairy those four ingredients. Okay, and then if dairy is equal to length, which is not, we skip it. Therefore, we should not go inside here, which we don't. Okay, next food item: allergen fish. Uh, we don't have. Uh, it's the first time we encounter fish. Therefore, we add it. So we have fish with all of these, that's good. Fish uh, does not have one uh, ingredient, so we shouldn't go in there. All right, so now we have dairy. We're on our second food item, we have dairy. Um, we did find uh, dairy before, therefore it should not go in here, it should go in here. And um, new possible ingredients gonna be just this one. Because we go, these are the possible ingredients, and then we filter out um, if it doesn't include in the current ingredients, and those that are not in the current, yeah, includes uh, true. So the ingredients that are not in the current ingredients, I'm gonna filter out. And those that are are gonna be true okay and uh ingredient to allergen but we don't have any there yet so we're gonna assign uh this ingredient 
to a dairy allergen okay so now yeah it's indeed one so we should go in here and then our ingredients we're gonna map it to dairy so then on the next iteration we have yeah that ingredient mapped to dairy and here reverse we have dairy which is that ingredient all right so we are the next uh, at the third food item uh, soy soy we haven't encountered soy before therefore we should assign it possible ingredients which are those two that's correct that's correct okay so we go to the last food item and which has fish and fish has these possible ingredients we already excluded one for dairy so we should we already found one for dairy which is the first one so we should exclude that one uh, we're not gonna go in here we're gonna go in here so possible ingredients is just that one all right that makes sense so that works and then um, here it's also length one oh I see where the logic is because we already found our last item something else we need to do here is go through our current list it's kind of like clean up our current list yeah so th this found ingredient which is well let me we're gonna go inside this one we need to exclude it from soy yeah we need to exclude it from soy so that we're left with one so when we found an we find an ingredient here, we need to do some cleanup. Okay. I think this is what's uh, missing in our program here. Um, so found. So yeah, we're not doing that. The comment says what we should be doing, but we're not doing that in the code. Uh, remove ingredients from other allergens. Uh, uh, so let's go through each four const. Allergen of object values. Allergen to possible ingredients and then allergen to possible ingredients allergen equals yeah we're gonna need to do entries here allergen and possible ingredients do we have a variable name clash? We do. So I, wanna, I found the ingredient and I need to remove this ingredient from all the uh, allergens that we have. So we have um, no, we don't need these. Well, yeah, kind of just entries. Possible ingredients. So we go through each uh, and then we say allergen to allergen 
the possible ingredients allergen okay so we filter possible ingredients possible ingredient is not equal to found ingredient okay I think uh, let's try again I'm gonna remove these breakpoints for now Oh, I see, I get the, kind of like in a loop. I get the same bug as I did before. Uh, I removed it from the current. I removed it the current one as well. So if allergen is not equal to food item allergen, yep, only then do that. All right. Okay, so we have that, that works well. So for example input, we have a working solution. But how about our own input? Awesome, yes, finally. Okay, uh, we can move on. We have um, a mapping of allergens and their ingredients, and we have a mapping of ingredients and their allergens. That's weird. Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight allergens. We only have a one, two, three, four, five ingredients. Okay, I need to do another mapping here. Yep. So, do, 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 do. It's kind of like recursive loop here. But so if this length is. Yeah, I should have I should have approached this completely different, and I just realized should have had a while loop. Uh, but okay, we'll stick to that. Uh, length is equal to one. Then ingredient to allergen. Actually, this needs to be a while loop. Yeah. Um, no. Let's do it like this for now. Ingredient to allergen. Uh, found ingredient. Found another ingredient. Yeah, this is really dirty. Uh, I just realized that my approach isn't the best, and I should have. I should have. Um, use the while loop and then I would have avoided all this it would be much simpler solution but it's gonna take me a longer time to uh, refactor the, the whole the entire approach so I'm just trying to make it work with what I have now and I hope this is enough I hope this is enough um, and I need to get the allergen there. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's run the program again. And now, yeah, we have eight ingredients. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. Cool. So um, back to our puzzle. What's the question? How many times do any of those ingredients appear that are not matched to an allergen? Okay. So we'll just have to do a simple We're gonna go through foods. We're gonna do a map first because we need to parse uh, We need to get the ingredients So we're gonna do um, ingredients Return ingredients Kind of like this, and maybe also do a flat map. 
because we're gonna get uh, yeah do a flat map and then in there we do a filter uh, ingredient and we only need to care about those that are not in our ingredient to allergen map so ingredient to allergen map ingredients that are not in there and then we are going to um, uh, just count the length of the array and that's going to be our answer number of ingredients without allergens answer part one um, and this is isn't really true number of ingredients without allergens um, number of ingredient occurrences without allergens that's actually what we have here all right so answer for part one is 2556 is that the correct answer yes it is we can move to part two awesome uh, part two now that you've isolated the inert ingredients you should have enough information to figure out which ingredients uh, contains which allergen in the above example oh yes this is awesome so um, remember that a previous on a previous day day 20 I had an approach for the first part that didn't work at all for the second part so I had to start the new it was constructing a map and the corner tiles I didn't actually construct a map I just was I was just being clever about which tiles would be corner tiles and uh, just grab those IDs and answer the first part. But then the second part, I need to construct a map. So I needed to actually, yeah, yeah, to construct a map. So the first part solution would not, I couldn't reuse it. But now, because we did all this work of mapping the allergens to ingredients and ingredients to allergens, uh, we'll be going to solve part two fairly easy because we already did all the work. Uh, now that you've isolated the inert ingredients, you should have enough information to figure out which ingredient contains which allergen. The above example contains dairy. Okay. Now, range the ingredients alphabetically by their allergen and separate them by commas to produce your canonical dangerous ingredient list. There should not, uh, there should not be any spaces in your canonical dangerous ingredient list. In the above example, this would be... Alright. What is your canonical? Yeah, so this is super easy. Uh, we're gonna use our uh, mapping ingredient to allergen and we're gonna get the keys all right so we do um, object keys ingredient to allergen and then um, we're gonna map those keys to a uh, no wait a second we can join those to, uh, yeah we can join uh, we're gonna have a bunch of keys so these are going to be the keys and then we join them with a comma that's it that's it so let's name this to const canonical what did it call it here dangerous ingredient list uh, Danger, uh, yes. ingredients uh, console log answer part two and what is it yep this is it that's really cool. If that's our answer, um, maybe I need to. Oh, I need to sort them alphabetically first. Okay, let's do that. I forgot to do that. 
uh, sort sort um, I think I can just do sort will that work yep that works I think this is the right answer oh uh, wait I just didn't copy the entire thing I need to wait as well but I think that's gonna be the answer so I have to wait 30 seconds before trying again uh, but yeah this is really awesome that's a good example of where um, where it pays off to take an approach for the first part a certain approach to solve the per first part with a certain approach that you can reuse uh, in the second part it's gonna make your solution for the second part much easier and in this case it's just yeah it's really simple it's just uh, one line of code it's still not the right answer that's interesting uh, am I doing so no input one is it alphabetically H G M N Q V Z it is let's uh let's try it for our example input wait is it is it reverse alphabetic no so they have m s and f and i have a different uh arrange the ingredients alphabetically by their allergen Oh, so we should arrange by allergen, not by ingredient. Okay, so here we sort. Uh, okay, so then I'll have to do entries. And then the sort is going to grab allergen. And that's going to be... Um, Let me add the sort to the new line. And it's gonna be, uh, uh, uh. let me think, what does sort uh, take for arguments? So sort takes a compare function, which is a callback with two arguments, A and B. Okay, uh, so then I can do allergen, B and allergen A and I can just do allergen A minus B all right oh and then I do a map allergen and then I actually run the program oh wait <laughs> I don't need the allergens, I need them. So now we can see they're sorted by alphabetically. D, F, S, so that's nice. But now I need the ingredients instead of the allergen. All right. So now we have M, S, F. I think now we have the correct order. Yep, do. Let's try it with our own input. We get a different. So the list was the same. We just like we're figuring out what the correct sorting should be for the answer to be accepted. Still not correct. That's interesting. Hmm. Maybe let's add a breakpoint to do, 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 do in here. What are so our ingredients to allergens? Where is it here? And then dangerous ingredients is
So what's the, uh, what should be the first? So we have the allergens here. What's the first allergen alphabetically that comes up? Is it dairy? It's dairy. So VCCKP should be uh, our first item on the list, which isn't true for some reason. So maybe the sorting isn't right here. Uh, let's see, let me add a breakpoint here and I'm gonna go in here. Uh, not this one. Okay, so allergen A and allergen B. Allergen A is dairy, B is nuts. I need to sort, oh, I'm sorting the entire string. I don't think that's gonna work. I think I need to uh, grab the first element. Hmm, doesn't change. Okay, how do I sort things in JavaScript? I have an array sort, okay, that's, uh, Yeah, but I want to... So let me comment this one out and see what we get. So sort it, but it's not... How come nuts... Dairy, dairy should be first. And then it should be fish. So the sorting is not correct at all. So uh, sort takes a compare function oh wait maybe so a minus b let me google that Comp uh, sort uh, strings alphabetically javascript Something negative if first argument is less than second. So if I do, let's see, if I do dairy minus nuts, what does it return? Not a number. Oh, that's why. Okay. So I actually need to, I can't, yeah, I can't subtract strings. I have to um, use local compare. Yeah, local compare. I never have to sort strings. So I haven't done this in a long time. Local compare returns a number indicating whether reference string comes before or after, or it's the same as the given string is uh, in sort order. Nice, nice. So then I can say dairy, local compare, and nuts. Oh wait, local compare. Minus one, okay. So maybe I used, need to use that one. Um, allergen A, local, compare, allergen B. Still figuring out our sorting here, but I think they should look fine. Hey, okay, dairy, eggs, fish, this looks sorted. Awesome. And then sesame shell also. Perfect. Okay, we had a sorting issue for our uh, second part. But luckily, uh, yes, this should be the correct answer. 
Oh, damn it. I didn't copy the actual, the entire string. And I already tried, so I need to wait a minute. Okay, we'll wait a minute. Um, let me get rid of this input. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, that's pretty nice. The answer part, part two is so short compared to one. But we were using a bunch of stuff, so I think we can even like move this out here. Because part two is kind of like this. Um, foods and using that and then part two is this and both are using stuff from up top here yep i might add a comment here later on explaining what's happening okay let's try again you have to wait three and a half minutes. Oh, I tried too many times now. Silly me. Okay, three and a half minutes. Just bear with me. Uh, let's send me all the uh, refactor, refactor stuff. Yeah. Let's clean up some things. Um, foods, okay. Uh, choo -choo -choo -choo. So that's parsing, okay. Da -da -da. All right, so what do we have here? We have two mappings. We have two mappings and then we kind of like go. Yeah, we explain we found the matching ingredient for this allergen, remove ingredients from other allergens. Um, which we do here. If current allergen is not only change, only change, only remove, do not remove found ingredients from current allergen allergen otherwise we're left without an ingredient for that allergen uh, and then we filter I mean yeah that's what it does we filter out that ingredient and this is kind of like a nested loop And what do we do here? We found another one, so... Found another... Another... Um, matching... Found another... Matching ingredient. Add to... Uh, ingredient... To allergen mapping. That's what we're doing here. We're adding uh, this ingredient to the mapping because we were like off by one. All right, we added some comments in here. Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with what we have so far. Uh, I could refactor this into, uh, like I said earlier, to use a kind of like a while loop and go through them and not have this kind of like repeating code here. Um, but uh, that's gonna take more work and I don't think I will do that. Let's see if we can try our answer. 24 seconds. Uh, yeah, let's wait 24 more seconds. I hope I still have it in my key. Yep. Okay. 20 seconds left until the moment of truth. Have we solved the second part? <laughs> Foods. 
ingredients, allergens, foods. Maybe I can rename this to food items. Rename this to foods. Yep. Food items, and each food item has bars food so that each food item is an array with two elements element uh, food item with two elements and then uh, ingredients an array of ingredients an array of ingredients and an array of allergens that's kind of like what's happening here okay let's uh, give it a try i think 20 seconds passed yes that's the correct answer for the second part of uh, day 21 we solved it uh closer to saving your vacation Woohoo! Great, uh, yeah, so that was it for uh, day 21 today. Uh, thank you for watching, I appreciate it. And uh, tomorrow we're gonna continue with day 22. As it looks, we left our island on our raft, which we just built, because um, we gathered the food items for our journey. It's gonna take a few days to reach our final destination, which is uh, right down here. It looks like it's appearing. So tune in tomorrow. Uh, wait, before I do that, I'm gonna upload my answer, uh, push my answers to GitHub so you can have a look. So let's just uh, get come uh, get add status. Yep, get commit day twenty one solved. Git push origin main. And the answer is going to be here, just here. Yep, day 21. I'm going to link it in the chat in case you want to have a look. And um, that's that. Um, I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, for day 22. Uh, four day, more days to go for Advent of Code 2020. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, see you tomorrow, same time, 10 a.m. in the morning, Central European time. Bye-bye.